Earlier in the day, the Nigeria Governors Forum had issued a statement. Part of the statement reads, the NGF holds that the 60,000 Naira minimum wage proposal is not sustainable and cannot fly. It will simply mean that many states will spend all their FAC allocations on just paying salaries with nothing left for development purposes. Uh -huh. Like you've heard it that the state governors in Nigeria are complaining that even the 60,000 Naira that is already rejected by Nigerian Labour Congress is too much for them to pay. <laughs> I'm going to be proving them wrong. Follow me. An analysis was made some time ago and it showed that if the federal government agrees to pay a minimum wage of 494,000 Naira, they were going to be spending 9.5 trillion Naira on the wages for workers in Nigeria. Now, how many workers do we have in Nigeria? I went um, in my study, I found out that the approximate number of figure of workers we have in Nigeria is about 720,000 of them. And the federal government is saying we can't afford to pay 9.5 trillion Naira to these 720,000 persons, which is going to be at a, at a, at a minimum wage of 494,000 Naira. Now, let me, let, me, let me give you some analysis. I, I became so rational about it and I, I went to do a little study about it. Recall that there was a study that was made just last week that showed that 30 governors in Nigeria spend about 900 and something billion naira on entertainment and other utility bills. We're talking about the lavish, opulent spending of uh, the governors. Some of them, if not all of them, uh, at some point. Uh, but according to this later, re latest reporting, 30 of them have spent close to a trillion naira, I believe, um, on refreshment and other um, not so necessary expenditure. Uh, especially looking at the breakdown, if you did uh, catch that report by Ibrahim Ismail, he did a breakdown of some of those expenditures. 5.1 billion now was spent on refreshment for guests. Sitting allowances cost 4.67 billion now. Travel allowances 34.63 billion now. Utilities, all right, 5.64 billion now. And uh, salaries went to about 405.7 billion now. All of this in the first quarter of this year yes, alone. Three this months. just happened in just three months. And I began to check these statistics because I'm a very rational person and I always like to think. I began to check these statistics. I found out that the money that these 30 governors spend, which is about 900 and something um, billion naira, approximately 1 trillion naira, is about 10% of the 9.5 trillion naira that the federal government is saying they cannot pay to 720 civil servants at 494,000 naira. I don't know if you get that. And I said I'm going to prove them wrong by doing this video. If 30 governors in Nigeria will spend approximately 1 trillion naira in 3 months for utilities, entertainment and trivial things, it actually means that there is money in the government because the government goes ahead to make it look like there's no money but when you look at statistics just like they spent 21 billion naira to renovate vice president's house vice president shetima and records has it that somebody refused some media media men to go in to cover the event it's very unfortunate you can't tell me that there's no money but yet 30 governors will spend approximately 10 percent of what they should be able to pay 720,000 civil servants for one year. They spend it in three months. They say there's no money. Very unfortunate. Anyway, information also has it that after the tripartite meeting, for those who have not heard about it, after the tripartite meeting of the organized labor, the government side and the private sector have concluded a report on Friday, which is just a few, few days ago, a few hours ago rather. They've come up with a recommendation. After the federal government went ahead to halt the indefinite strike that was very impactful on the economy of Nigeria, negatively anyway, they said, come back to the negotiation table, we're going to be, let's discuss, let's talk about how to move forward. Interestingly, they showed a very low fit by adding just 2,000 naira to the minimum wage. And a lot of people have been condemning the actions of the Nigerian Labour Congress. When you were on that strike, the right thing to be done, like so many people have gone out to say, was continue the strike. Because the truth of the matter is that that is the only language the federal government understands. Continue the strike. Go back to the negotiation table while you're on the strike and say, okay, what do we do now? How much are you adding? The federal government went ahead to say they're going to be adding some more money. They left it open 
and that was the mistake Labour and NLC, NLC and TUC did to say, okay, halt the strike, let's go back to the negotiating table. And unfortunately, what the federal government has added is just 2,000 naira, showing a very low faith. For them to accept that and to bring that forward, including the organized uh, private uh, sector, for them it's sustainable because they agreed to it. So I believe that that's what they can pay. Caution had been displayed all through so that a figure that would further uh, throw uh, the country into confusion is not announced. This is because um, if any party goes into an agreement of a figure that it knows from its sources it cannot afford, then it's going to create another problem. But I thank God that all wisdom uh, came together and that the recommendation to Mr. President is going uh, along the direction that you have just heard from His Excellency, uh, the uh, Governor of Imo State, who played a very critical role in mediating this process. And now this brings me to something very critical. What the governors are saying and what the federal government is saying. The governors are saying this simply because most of the governors in Nigeria are not productive. And it is very ridiculous and shameful indeed. You see a governor wake up after 30 days and goes to the federal allocation, FAC, FAC, what they call FAC. You go there and do original copy received by me, you receive a check of whatever it is, hundreds of millions, and come back to your location and start spending. You start spending, spending, spending. When the check is finished, you now go ahead to start spending internally generated revenue. After spending internally generated revenue, you wait for the next one to go and withdraw again. And that is the problem we're having as a nation. No state governor is willing to become productive. For goodness sake, our state governors need to look at a way of being productive, just like Peter Obi said. This consumption thing is a very bad ideology. State governors cannot go in to say, okay, this product belongs to the state government. This product belongs to Bayasa state government that we're exporting. No. All we do is end up spending money. And that is why NLC chairman was saying that it's not like they cannot afford this bill. The only reason why they cannot afford it is simply because these guys are not willing to cut down on corruption. These guys are not willing to spend less on trivial things. They want to be very comfortable. They want to go ahead to live their, their normal lives. But they don't ever want to consider the people. And we all know what the economy is talking about. We must get to the level of becoming productive. You look at the issue of electricity, for instance, for the past two to three to four decades, Nigerians have been crying for electricity in, a, in, a, in, a, in, this, in this jet generation, and it's an issue. How can the economy of Nigeria thrive without electricity, where the likes of MSME, small medium scale industries like saloons, um, people that do bags, shoes in their own little way, in their own streets can, can be able to try because you can't actually do these things without electricity. That is the only thing that will make the economy of Nigeria to try. But no, the federal government is not looking at it from that perspective. And thanks to the federal government anyway for approving, the, for deregulating the power sector. That gives rise to the governors in Nigeria to be able to go ahead to generate electricity for their states. But no. Like I was arguing with somebody the other day that the truth of the matter is that why most of these governors go ahead to do just structures and projects, projects that are capital projects, is simply because that is the only thing that can keep their legacy. That's the only thing that can keep their legacy. Say, ah, when this man was there, he was able to build this road. They don't know how to build men. Because if you're building men, see someone said, building structures, bridges and rail lines cannot be compared to building a man. Because if you build a man, you will have built the nation. But no, they all want to build structures. They all want to build, build projects that would keep their name. Unfortunately, as good as that is, it is very limited compared to building the building men. Because the truth is that if you do not build men, those same men that you do not build will destroy the so-called structures you're building. I'd like you to go to the comment section and drop your thought. Let's get to know what you think about the current shenanigans that's happening in Nigeria and what you think about the political sector and we shall continue to be here to serve you. Many thanks indeed to all our viewers and returning subscribers. Really do not take it lightly. My name again is Moses, and this is Take Down TV.